right again happy new year this is my second video from my little trip up to the Cotswolds that I did uh, for for New Year's Eve so I've just done uh, a wild camp up on uh, Lookhampton Hill with James and Mary from Bad Hair Adventures they've gone home and I thought well it's a two and a half hour drive for me to, to get here so I might as well make the most of it and do a little bit of sightseeing be a classic tourist and literally the other side of Cleve Hill the highest point in the Cotswolds uh, which I visited in the, the New Year's Eve wild camp video other side of that is Bella's Nap like Long Barrow it's like a Neolithic or prehistoric uh, chamber tomb long barrow uh, very similar to like west kennet long barrow in wiltshire um and yeah it's in the the wild guide for central england which are a really good set of books by the way um if you're looking for places to go things to do and see even places to wild camp or really decent campsites get yourself a book of one of these books of your relevant area so i'm going to quickly read you the entry for Bella's Nap. So it says Bella's Nap, Cleve Hill. A fantastic example of a Neolithic long barrow from 3000 BC with far reaching views above Humbleby Wood on the Cotswold Way. The large mound covers several stone chambers which held nearly 40 skeletons, some in sitting positions. Pretty cool. Bit morbid. Yeah, the Cotswold Way is a long distance route, uh, a national trail one, so it's a well signposted one. And I think it runs from Evesham to Bath. Could be wrong, but I think that's what James said it, it, it ran from. And it's about 100 miles. And yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that at some point. That would be pretty cool. I mean, this would give me a good taster for it. I've seen a lot of the places... Um, the last two days that are on the Cotswold Way, you know, it looks really good. Anyways, I'm gonna grab a head torch because it'll be dark inside the inside the long barrow, no doubt. I'll take you along with me. Might need some waterproofs because it's been raining this morning. So, enough talking. Let's get walking and let's get exploring. There's people there already but you can just see the mound of Bella's Nap here so we've arrived it's at least a mile walk to get here it's, it's, it's a bit of a trek and some uphill some uphill climbs but it's worth it this barrow is over 5,500 years old and was constructed by prehistoric people as a place to bury their dead the remains of at least 38 people were buried within the four chambers and behind the portal setting. Radiocarbon dates show 
that they had died between 3700 and 3600 BC in the early Neolithic period. They probably led a lifestyle based on cattle herding, small scale farming and hunting. The information board at the site uses sketches from excavations that took place in 1863 to 1865 when all the chambers and the horned forecourt were uncovered. The barrow was left in ruins until 1928 when further excavations and restoration took place. Today the chambers have concrete roofs. They would originally have had corbelled stone ceilings. A circle of stone slabs containing ashy soil, perhaps representing an earlier phase of the monument, was found during the excavations in 1865. Most of the stones of Chamber E were removed after the 1860s excavations, which revealed human skull fragments. Always make sure you've got a head torch with you when you're exploring things like this. Chamber C had a porthole entrance formed of two vertical stone slabs and contained 11 or 12 skeletons, one of which was described as being in a sitting position. So with this one, I'm still crouching down but I've got a lot more space. These absolutely huge rocks in here like you think how how on earth did they manage to get these here into position they must weigh more than anyone can lift on a bar in a gym put it that way they're awkward as well natural stone lifting it must have taken so many people you can see where they've modern day they've put these metal supports in just to reinforce the structure Although this thing looks like it's built to last it's incredible absolutely incredible absolute feat of human engineering Within Chamber D were 14 skeletons of varying age, including a child and an adult, probably female, who had fatal head injuries. These show that raiding and conflict may have been common in the early Neolithic. At least two male and two female skeletons were found in chamber B with flint flakes, pottery and animal bones. Once again this one doesn't go that far in either, literally about two three meters tops, the ceiling's probably about a meter high. This false entrance, known as a portal setting, has a forecourt which was used for ceremonies. The skeletons of five children and a young man, together with animal bones and flint flakes, were buried behind the stones. So that was a, a little look at Bella's Nap Long Barrow. I would say this, along with West Kennet Long Barrow, and Wayland Smithy Long Barrow are probably the three most significant and important Long Barrow sites in this country and they're all I think pretty much in like kind of the south you know Wayland Smithy is uh, well that's Oxfordshire near like Uffington Whitehorse um, Bella's Nap of course is, is here Gloucestershire Cheltenham sort of way and West Kennet is Wiltshire near Silbury Hill and Avebury. 
these are the three most significant long barrow sites like definitely they've probably learned so much about long barrows just on these three sites so yeah if you're into your prehistory you've got to come here you've got to check this out uh, it's probably my favorite era of history to be fair like just you know early early humans you know and sort of how they started to settle rather than being like hunter gatherers they started to like settle and f work the land and you know build homes and farms and and like worship their dead and stuff and bury their dead you know they people think of them as like neanderthal cavemen and stuff that weren't too smart and it's like not really to build something like this takes intellect and skill so that's why i find that period like the neolithic the new stone age so so interesting because i think they're yeah like i say they're often overlooked as i don't know not being a very sophisticated culture sort of thing but basically everything that you see today now farms houses stuff like that stemmed from the neolithic from this era and that's why i think stuff like this should be taught in schools I don't know if it is i mean when i was at school it wasn't anyway i think this stuff's key it's so important to like the very fabric of our existence <laughs> that's a bit deep but anyway yeah i was up here a bit longer than planned i mean there's not a hell of a lot to see um i would say wayland smithy and west kennet are probably more interesting to view but still this is still brilliant still top three uh, but yeah, I was up here a lot longer because there was just so many people about and I was trying to get photos and set the camera up and stuff and yeah, people just get in the way and stuff. Although you've got to look at it, I'm in the way because I'm the one filming and doing stuff. So you just have to, you have to work around other people. They've, they've come out on New Year's Day, celebrate the new year and, and come to somewhere magical like this. I don't blame them. If I had kids as well, I'd do the same thing probably. I'd be like, kids, we're going to see some old shit. <laughs> so anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna head back down now it's about a mile mile and a half probably um it should be easier going downhill um i'm gonna leave it there thank you very much for watching happy new year again um yeah get out and explore places like this and respect them as well show them some respect because they're fascinating places cheers for watching everyone take care of yourselves look after each other stay safe get out there and explore be nice to each other see you soon bye Swingers. <laughs>